Psalm 121. We shall read verse 1 and 2 in Psalm 121. We shall read verse 1 and verse 2. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. If you're not reading, just interpret. Okay. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth listen to this a good person is a person who whatever challenges he faces whatever crisis he may find himself in no matter how sick the person is no matter how disparate the person is a good person is a person who seek help. A normal person is a person who seek help. Any person who can be in a problem who can be facing a challenge who may have a need in life who may be sick in life but refuse to be helped that person is no longer normal but a normal person and a good person will always raise up his hand no matter how down the person is he will always call please help me he will say help me even if he is lost he will seek help he won't just keep on going to show that he is a normal person to show that he is a normal person to show that he is a good person the last thing he will do please help me can I hear somebody say God help me can I hear somebody say God help me these are the words of a normal person he will seek help but in seeking help a person ought to be wise it does not mean that when you are sick anything they offer you it does not mean that it will heal you it does not mean that it will help you one day I went to pray for this mother she was 
critically ill. She was diagnosed with intestinal cancer. And when I walked into her room, her face was solid. The eyes could no longer open up. I was with two people. When we entered the room, the two people I was, they cried and went out. While I was still in the room, two of these women's colleagues came when they saw her condition they cried they went out and I remained there alone with her you know there are some conditions when you look at them you ask yourself so many questions. Can prayer work in a condition like this? It's like she heard that I was just standing and not doing anything. Her eyes could not open up. She said to me, Thank you for coming. She said, Please open my refrigerator there. I opened the refrigerator. She said, Take a refuse bag somewhere there. I took it. She said, before you pray for me, take everything that is inside the refrigerator and put it in the refuse bag. When I looked in the refrigerator, there was there were every kind of medicine some of the medicines are self-made I have never seen it everybody who was visiting her was coming with an own medication in some bottles I saw alu being crushed and put in bottles in some bottles I saw leaves that has been just crushed mixed with water sealed in bottles I saw all sorts of fruits leaves roots I said where did you get these things she said everybody who comes here because of my condition is coming with a sort of medication and she said I am tired I needed help. I needed help. But the help that was offered to me is a burden. It has become a burden to me. Could you imagine you are sick like that? The doctor has prescribed you medication. Your friends and relatives have prescribed you medicine. The pastors have also been prescribed to you what to drink. 
Everybody has a prescription. Yes, you want help. But the prescription you have is too confusing. And we don't know what will be the chemical reaction in your body if you use all these different medications. Maybe the doctor is aware of the chemical reaction. That if I give you this treatment, the side effects will be these ones. But as for your friends and relatives, and whosoever you believe in, these things they are offering you has not been tested and tried. They will just be tested in your body. Whether they work or not work, they will, the result will only be seen when they have been used by you. She said, Indeed, I needed help. I am helpless. But take away all these medications, put them in the refuse bag. And she said, Pray for me. She said, Pray for me. After I have put all these in the refuse bag, I prayed. I touched her forehead. It was too solemn. I just touched. I said, Lord Jesus, you alone, you are the maker of a human body. You alone can repair it. You alone can heal it. I finished praying. There was no change. But I've prayed. She said to me, now that you've prayed for me, I know I will live. I left. I left. I left. I left. I had to throw those rubbish at Sokopo when I was driving back to Guyane. The following day, I looked at my phone. There is no message. I thought of phoning her. I said, no, let me wait. Around three afternoon, she phoned me. When I saw her phone coming, my call coming into my phone, I said, hey, she's still alive. Because the condition last yesterday, it was like it is her last day on earth. I answered the call. She said, hey, why didn't you check me since morning? You thought I'm dead. <laughs> I said, yes, I didn't want to trouble myself. She said, your God has heard your prayer. She, she said, said, I'm up on my feet. And she said, Tonight, I'm going back to work because it's long that I've been on sick leave. She's still alive today by the grace of God. The intestinal cancer disappeared. A normal person shall seek help no matter how difficult your situation is even if you have come to a point where it's like you are beyond help 
If you are normal in your mind, if you are good in your heart, you will keep on seeking help. But if you are wise, you will be careful. You will be careful. You will be careful. Where to seek help? Hello. Amen. If you are wise, if you are wise, we will see you by the choice you make towards the kind of help you want. It does not mean that if you are in a difficult situation, you have no choice. You still have a choice. You can still say yes to some of the things. You can still say no to some of the things. Is somebody listening? Is somebody listening? David said, David Agu, where can I get my help? Have you ever asked yourself this question? In the situation in which you are in now, have you ever made a shopping list? of possible places where you can find help. He says, where does my help come from? Some don't care where their help come from. Some don't give themselves time to list all possible places where they can get help. Some don't give them time. They don't give themselves time to prioritize. Where is your number one place to get your help? Where is your number one place to get your help? You see, even a person must have a number one phone number. I like many public places. Many public places. When you go there, apart from the phone numbers of those places, there are also emergency numbers. Emergency number number one. number number one. Police call center. Two. Two. Three. Fire brigade. They, they always have these numbers. What are your top three numbers in your phone? Hey, what are your top three numbers in your phone? Top three numbers. And what are your top three places to go? In case of need. In case of emergency in your life. If something strikes you in the middle of the day, in the middle of the night, what is the top three names that you can call? David says, Where does my help come from? One night I was driving from Konkoa. I was coming to Giani. Somewhere when I passed Bambeni. 
I had a tire punch. And it was very dark. Very late in the evening. Past 11. Past 11. And I'm alone. And I said, I cannot start repairing the car in the middle of the night alone. I thought let me call three numbers the first number I called one member of the church so that he must come with his car and assist me the phone was off the second number I tried Pastor E's phone. The phone was off. Number three. This, this was my worst number. I called one of my daughters. She answered the phone, but she was asleep. Hello, man. And she switched off. Where does my help come from? Perhaps let me ask you. This question David asked himself actually where does your help come from every day actually who is helping you you must ask yourself this question until you can come up with a straight answer he said where does my help come from before he answered before he answered himself he did one thing he said I lift up my eyes to the mountains. What is he, he telling us here? He is saying, I lift up my eyes above people far above people. Hey, there are people when they need help, they need people. There are people who are people sick. And there are people who are material sick. Once they are sick, they want things around them. Water, Mati, this, they are looking down. They are looking on the things of this world. But he says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Can mountains help you? No. He says, I lift up my eyes up the mountains. The reason you don't find help it is because of where you are focused you are focused on something that won't help you you have a need you are sick you have a crisis you have a problem you can't find help 
Because of where you are looking. Hey, because of where you are looking. You are looking on something that does not give life. You are looking at something that it does not talk. You are looking at something that it does not live. It's only you who make it live. By praising it. You see, this thing of mine, it works. If I can give you this one, it has helped me one day. You are making it alive. But it can make you alive. You are making it famous. You are making it powerful by over praising it. But it is not powerful. But it does not work. But it does not it is not alive. To show that it is not alive. You are only carrying it everywhere. It does it it never works to any point by itself. Whatever you are relying on, all those things are relying on you to carry them from point A to point B. You must carry it in your bag. You must carry it in your car. You must carry it into your house. Carry it to your work. It has never carried you anywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Where you have put it is still remain there. But when you look at it, you praise it. Oh, look at my helper. Oh, look at my helper. You have even given it names. You see, this one helps me in this this one helps me in this this one helps me in this but all is having the handwriting of man not the handwriting of God so David said I lift up my eyes Hey, there is a time when a person must lift up his eyes. I was talking to one person. I said, hey, there is drought. The animals are suffering. But of all the domestic animals, I only see cattle suffering. And this man told me something. He said, do you know why cattle are suffering? I said, yeah, it is dry. He said, no. It is not because it is dry. It is because a cattle always walk looking down. So on the ground is dry. But the trees, they still have leaves. So a cow cannot walk looking at the leaves. It will pass so many green leaves. Looking for green grass. It depends where you are looking. So a goat is very clever. It looks down. It looks up. It tries to climb. It eats standing sometimes. Sometimes it eats kneeling the, the four legs. It so where are, are your eyes looking you are looking for a job 
The problem is one. Shipiko ishiyu. You are still depending on your uncle to phone you. Wena wa la wa imela kumalumu wa wena bata kufone. That I have heard that in our factory they are going to hire some people. Wa ni tule la sokuleka factory ya ina bala kutholavan. You are a student. Umana wa school. You want to study. Ulaba kuya matweni na di dondo tawe. But your problem is one. You are still looking at the income of your parent. That's the wrong source. That's the wrong source. You are still looking down. So if your parent is not earning more than 3,000, how will you go to university? You will start to be lazy to study. Anyway, I can't go anywhere. Even if I pass well. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Hey, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. If you are looking for a job. Once you hear that in a particular place they are hiring people, the person who told you is already hired. If he was not hired, he won't tell you. Go where you have heard nothing. Lifting up your eyes above friendship and connections lifting up your eyes hey, I still have to pray for someone who can believe for a, a job who can believe God for a job to go and work where you know no one Mm-hmm.